Hey everybody, Brendan here with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're going to show you how to do the carburetor synchronization for the CB and CL SL175 family of bikes, as well as the CB200, CL200 family of bikes, or any bike that has one of these slide style carburetors that Honda used from the 60s through the 70s. Stay tuned. Uh, what I'm holding in my hand here is a carburetor from a, actually this one happens to be from a CL175. Uh, CBs use the same carburetor. Uh, and this style of carburetor, which I call a mechanical slide because the slide moves up and down on the carb and the cables what moves the slide up and down, uh, were really commonly used by Honda from the mid 60s, kind of through the mid 70s on a, a handful of applications. Uh, this particular carb is the one we were built in our rebuild series. So we haven't checked out uh, the 175 carb rebuild before you're watching this one make sure you go back and watch that video because it answers a lot of questions that we're going to reference here in the future and this style of carburetor in various sizes and configurations were used on a lot of the twin cylinder uh two carb engines i said from the 60s and 70s this includes the the 175 family so that's the cb cl sl it's uh successor 200 CBCL200, but also its predecessor, the 160s used carbs like this. The old 305, like CB77s and CL77s also use carbs like this. Even like the K1 and K2 SL350s all use carb like this. So uh, regardless of the, the model specific, the techniques are gonna be the same for all these carbs. And we're gonna be adjusting two parameters on these carburetors as part of the synchronization process. The first parameter is going to be getting the slides in the same position for idle speed because our idle speed is the slowest speed our engine runs at and we want to make sure that the carbs are synced at idle. The second parameter we're adjusting is what we call progressive synchronization, meaning that when you're turning the throttle grip, you want to make sure that the slides in these carburetors are moving up and down at the same rate and same time. When those parameters are off, you're out of synchronization. And when things are out of synchronization, bike runs all kinds of weird and wacky and you'll pull your hair out trying to figure out how to make it right. So while this is a simple process, paying attention to the granular details of it will make the difference between a bike that runs amazing versus a bike that runs really poorly. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up real quick here. My rubber boot, slide it up all the way like that. So we can see the cable in the end of the adjuster there. So we're looking at our, in this case, it's the left side carburetor for the bike. The right side is the, is the same thing. It's just a mirrored image of it. And our, our two adjustment points we're gonna be focusing on are, are, this is our idle speed screw, which we're gonna set up to put the carburetors in sync uh, at, idle, at idle speed. And then we have our cable adjuster screw up here on the top of the carburetor. It's this little brass thing that's underneath the, the rubber boot. And we'll get into that in a minute. But we're gonna take and show you a few more of these details up close on the bench before we come back to the bike and make the adjustments on the bike. The next part I wanna point out in the carburetors is gonna be the some details on the idle speed screw or you could say the slide position screw. Now this, this purpose of the screw is it changes the height of the slide which therefore changes the idle speed of the bike. Uh, the two I have over here are factory original screws and I have our new common motor screw that's in our kit and then I have another generic screw that came out of a unknown a carburetor that's an aftermarket thing from back in the day and the very important detail to point out is going to be these little t marks it looks like the letter t on each screw and what that mark represents is not only the position of the the screw uh you know, in the clocking of it but also how far in does the screw go in relation to the carburetor body this mark lines up with a different mark on the carburetor body which we'll point out here in a second as far as the proper starting place to set the slides at the same height for the sink. Now, it doesn't mean they're gonna be at the right idle speed. We'll talk about that more in detail in a second, but at least it's the same starting speed. Over the years, carb kit manufacturers thought that this screw was some kind of mixture screw, and so they started adding it to carb kits. 
which do not have the T stamped into it. So now we have no reference to the position of the, uh, where the screw is in reference to the body. Our new common motor one does have the T mark on it. The other thing to keep in mind is even during production on the Honda stuff, there were differences between the screws. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, they had different heights. The, the important thing is you need to make sure you have a, two matching screws in your carburetor in reference to the length of the tip to the T mark on each screw. It doesn't matter if it's early production, late production, but they have to be the same. It's like having two shoes of the same size. You know, that's basically what we're looking for here on the screws. Let's go over to the carburetor body and show you how we actually set this up. We're back from the bench and before I go ahead and reinstall the screw, I wanted to highlight our, our little index reference mark on the carb body. I'm gonna do that with Sharpie to make it a little bit easier to see. So here's our, our idle speed screw. We have an original one here and we highlighted, of course, the, the T mark on it so we can see it very well. And uh, we're using, in this case, we're using an original spring on it. And that it doesn't really matter as long as everything is the same left to right. So in this case, I'm just gonna start threading it in by hand. And as I come around, you can see the T mark. All right, so that's our, our, our zero position or our reference position. Uh, we'll go do the same thing on the opposite side, uh, carburetor as a starting point. The last point I'm gonna make in regards to the idle uh, sink position in the first part of this adjustment process uh, has to do with the idle speed setting of the bike after you have zeroed out uh, the slide position by adjusting the screw and lining up uh, those uh, different marks there. And so what we've basically done is we've tried to put the slides in the exact same position, whether they're the same height in either carburetor. Now, that position may not be the best position for the proper idle speed of the engine. We like to see these engines idle between about 12 and 1500 RPM. So maybe they're too slow, maybe they're too fast. You're not gonna know until you fire up the bike and it's running. The important thing to keep in mind is if you have to either speed up or slow down the engine, they have to be done together. So basically, if the engine's running too slow, we need to raise both slides the same amount. That means however much you turn that screw, and I recommend usually half turn to quarter turn increments, the same adjustment has to be done to the opposite side at the same time. Give the throttle a rev, let the system relax and see where you are. Because we're trying to avoid this situation where you have one that's too high and the other one that's too low, and now the carbs are fighting each other and the engine's fighting for idle speed. It's really unstable. So ideally you either go up together or down together. But our marks just represent a zero point uh, starting point. So if you mess up, re uh, line up the dots, try again, either up the same amount or down the same amount to make sure the bike idles properly. The second uh, part of the synchronization process has to do with the progressive synchronization, which means that how does the cable, when we turn the throttle, pull the slide up and down, and that's done with our, our adjuster right here, and setting the amount of slack in that cable there right now, that's pretty loose, and playing with this adjuster. We're gonna go to the bench and show you some details on how we'd like to um, approach doing this, and then we'll come back to the bike here and make the adjustment here on this bike. Uh, I do want to take a moment to talk about the throttle cable uh, for these uh, for these bikes because the cable is so important to the progressive synchronization. So the cable has to be in good shape. It has to be working smooth. And when we have this split two in the one uh, type of cable, uh, there's some granular details that are really important for smooth operation. So not only does the cable have to move nice and smooth, right? And like, well, that, that's a given. So the cables are all worn out. Uh, it should be changed. But these two parts of the cable that go to each carburetor, they're actually not the same length. You actually see that they're offset a bit. Now the throw is the same, so the travel of the cable is the same, but the lengths of the cable and the housings are different. And this is because the routing for the right side carburetor, which is indicated with a little red 
mark here is a little bit longer and a little bit different than the left side carburetor. We go over the frame so we get a nice, clean, straight shot into the top of the carburetor adjuster to avoid any kind of kinks or friction that can be caused by having the cable routed in a zigzaggy type of fashion. Another important detail on the cables, and if you don't have them, is the boots. You should have the two boots on the end. It's not just a dust boot. It is a locking boot, which locks the cable adjuster to the top of the carb cap. Uh, we've gone to great lengths here at Common Motor to make these cable adjuster boots that have a hexagon inside diameter to them so that it fits on top of this adjuster screw ever so perfectly because what we'll do is we'll end up adjusting these in a moment. We'll find our position, our boot's gonna slide on, and then we're gonna actually lock it in place right there. And that keeps the adjuster in position and not moving uh, so you keep your, your progressive synchronization settings in place. So that boot is hyper important. Uh, the first part of the progressive synchronization has to do with the actual cable itself and the cable condition. So if your cable's old or frayed or got a kink in it and needs to be changed because the spike is hypersensitive to having the cable in good shape. It's making sure it's seated up here in the boot and there isn't like a break right here. That's a very common spot for it to break. So make sure that's good. Uh, we also want to make sure the cable is seated properly in this end and these two are seated properly in these ends here all the way so there's no slop in the system because everything pulls how this works. And then nice smooth action on the throttle should have no resistance uh, down at the, at the top of the carburetor now um, we have our boot in place and as we mentioned earlier in the video the boot is hyper important and you'll see here when we finish this off if you do not have the boot you must have the boot that's a very important piece of this process uh, here's our adjuster that's in all the way and see how we have all this slack in the cable so we're going to be taking most of that out and we're gonna be setting the amount of slack even left to right. Now this adjuster here should be easy enough to move with just your fingers. Like I am not using a wrench on, I'm very lightly turning this with my fingers with little effort. So no wrench, just finger, finger level loose. Like it's that super loose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start backing it out and I'm gonna check my slack in the cable. A good visual reference to understanding your cable position is uh, on all these little metal ends that are crimped on the cable, they always have a little crimping marks that hold that uh, kind of ferrule in place. Oftentimes they'll line up with like the top edge there of the, you know, of the seat or not, or something around there. Like this one, if I push it down all the way, you can see that crimp mark just, just goes below the edge of that ferrule um, as a reference. So we're gonna be using this as visual reference to set the slack because it's already here. So I'm just going to start taking this little uh, adjuster out a bit and see what I'm doing is I'm, as I adjust that out, there's less and less slack in the system. I'm going to keep going until I kind of almost find where there's no vertical that. That's like almost no, no play right there. That's pretty much like zero play. And that's adjusted out pretty far. And that adjustment's out pretty far because this cable is actually not a really great cable on here. It's some aftermarket one, not a common motor cable that was on this bike. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie now and I'm just gonna end a Sharpie. That flat, that's kind of facing you guys, the camera right there for visual. That's our reference. All right, Sharpie's dried. So we're back to like almost no slack in that cable. And I'm going to go one full turn, two full turns in, about there. So that's our that's our our slack, and you can see about how much of that pops out of the uh, top of the adjuster there. And, and that's it in the adjustment. We're going to go and do the same thing on the opposite side. Uh, and once we can confirm that, we can put our boot on. Uh, but just for doing it on the camera right now, I'll go ahead and put the boot on. But yeah, that's. That's probably good. Now, if we go too tight with the adjuster, what's gonna happen is you're gonna preload the slide and you'll be pulling the slide up with the cable being too tight. We'll show this in a little bit more detail um, in just a minute here, but that's the phenomenon that can happen if you're too tight with the cable. All the stuff has to be a little bit loose. So we have to have just a little bit of play in it like that. I'm gonna slide my boot down over the adjuster. I'm gonna make sure it locks all the way there on the 
base of the carburetor. Because that boot keeps that brass adjuster in position so it doesn't move. So with the cable adjustment, we're trying to do is minimize that, that slop in the, uh, the cable. So ideally when we, when we turn the throttle, both slides are moving up together at the same time and coming down at the same time. If that adjustment is off, what can happen is this phenomenon, where one cable is tighter and looser, you turn the throttle, one starts to move, and then the other one follows it, and it does this number. And you're gonna be out of sync, and then they come back down the rest at idle, right? So we're trying to avoid this type of scenario. The other thing that can happen is if you tighten the cables too much on either carburetor, uh, what we've done is you've kind of preloaded the slides upwards so they're not touching that base idle screw anymore. So now you're off because the cables intention and then you give it gas and it does the same kind of thing where they're off. Ideally they're together at idle speed and then as the cable progresses they move up together and down together at the same rate. That's what our goal is. So we're going to talk about the upper piece of the cable here and where it goes into the throttle grip and while this isn't necessarily part of the sinking process the throttle cable has such an important factor of how the carbs are, are moving constantly, we wanna make sure this adjustment is done as well. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is this jam nut right here to the, to the elbow. And you know, this is just locks the elbow in place. It's got a 14 millimeter nut on it. I can loosen it and I can kind of change the position of where that is. And typically I just kind of let it find its spot where it seems like it kind of floats nice and smooth. And at that point, we can just gently lock it down. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, just snug like that so it doesn't move. Now this adjuster here, this adjuster's job is to take slack out of only the top cable, which I mean from here to the splitter, it takes that excessive slack. So that's what this is right here. That movement of the throttle cable there is the slop in that cable. I saw somebody one time use this as the idle speed set. They were tightening this up because I can actually take that and I can, yeah, I can do that. I can keep doing that. And if I do that far enough, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna preload the slides in the carburetor and this has no play in it, right? So this, I like to set this pretty loose unless I find that it has a lot of slop in the system. Like in this case, like that's like, that's probably good where you wanna be able to have a little bit of play in that. That's the adjustment there. And then just has a jam that on it. So that's an eight mil, that one. 10 mil there and just gently together so it doesn't move. And then you can put your, your dust bit over that. And we have a little bit of free play in there. This concludes our carburetor synchronization on this Honda CB175 motorcycle. Again, the same process applies to the other models we mentioned earlier that have these slide style carburetors. You can even use this process very similarly for uh, some of the aftermarket carbs that are out there that use uh, flat slides or round slides as well. So keep that in mind uh, if you're working on something else. Uh, with that, as always, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you like and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website, which gives you exclusives and a bunch of info before anybody else, even access to these videos before they go public. And of course, like this YouTube channel or subscribe to this YouTube channel below and ring the bell for notifications and we'll see you next time.